Imagine placing a tiny metal fragment under a powerful microscope and zooming in far beyond anything your eyes could ever see. At first, it looks ordinary. Then the surface begins to shift. You zoom again, thousands of times, and the texture becomes strange. You continue deeper until the image breaks into small, bright dots. These dots are atoms, the building blocks of everything around us. Seeing them today feels almost routine inside advanced labs, yet many scientists once believed it was impossible. The story of how we reached this point is long, surprising, and filled with breakthroughs that nearly failed. Why light can never show us atoms To understand why seeing atoms was once unthinkable, you must first understand light's limits. Light waves are what let us see the world, but they are far too large to show something as tiny as an atom. Even the shortest wavelengths of visible light are thousands of times wider than the diameter of an atom itself. When a wave is much bigger than what you want to observe, it does not reflect clearly. It bends around the object and hides it instead of revealing it. Every optical microscope ever built is bound by this limit. No matter how perfect the glass or how bright the light, visible light cannot resolve an atom. For decades, this seemed like an absolute boundary in science. Many experts believed that if atoms could not be seen with light, then they simply could not be seen at all. That belief held for years, until the early 1900s, when new ideas began to reshape physics. In 1924, the French physicist Louis de Broglie introduced a revolutionary concept. He suggested that all matter behaves like waves, not just light. Electrons, atoms, and even large objects have wavelengths tied to their momentum. If you accelerate electrons to very high speeds, their wavelengths shrink to scales much smaller than atoms. This meant electrons could reveal structures that light never could. But this new path raised a challenge. Electrons ignore glass lenses. They fly straight through them. So if electrons were to be used for imaging, someone needed to invent an entirely new kind of lens. The birth of the first electron lens A young researcher named Ernst Ruska was one of the few who saw promise in electromagnetic lenses. He wound wire into coils, passed strong currents through them, and surrounded them with iron to shape magnetic fields. When electrons rushed through these fields, they felt a sideways force called the Lorentz force. This force pushed the electrons toward the center of the magnetic field, bending their paths inward. Ruska realized that, with careful shaping of these fields, he could focus electrons into a sharp beam. Using this idea, he built the first magnetic lens, and then the first transmission electron microscope, or TEM. The early machine fired electrons from a tungsten filament toward a thin sample. The electrons passed through the sample. With dense areas blocking more electrons, and thin areas letting more through, a second magnetic lens magnified this pattern onto a screen. At first, the images were crude and blurred. Ruska was not discouraged. He added more lenses, adjusted voltages, redesigned the alignment system, and slowly improved the clarity. Within a few years, his microscope surpassed the abilities of optical microscopes. It revealed bacteria, viruses, and tiny biological structures that had never been seen before. Scientists were amazed. It seemed only a matter of time before Ruska's microscope would show atoms themselves. But progress soon hit a huge obstacle, one that no one knew how to overcome. The Limit That Stopped the World In 1936, the physicist Otto Scherzer made a discovery that stunned the scientific community. He proved that every symmetrical magnetic lens suffers from spherical aberration. This problem occurs when electrons passing near the center of the lens bend by the correct amount, but electrons near the edges bend too strongly. 
Instead of meeting at one perfect point, they smear into a region of blur. The more you magnify, the worse the blur becomes. Optical microscopes solve this by using a diverging lens to cancel the distortion. But magnetic lenses cannot do this. Magnetic field lines must loop from one pole to the other. They always push electrons inward with no clean way to create an opposite push. Scherzer's theorem showed that a symmetric magnetic lens could never remove spherical aberration. This set a firm limit on how sharp a TEM could become. Scientists tried many workarounds. They used brighter electron sources. They made thinner samples. Albert Crewe later developed a scanning version of the TEM that swept a narrow beam across the sample. And using this method, he captured the first image of a single atom in 1970. Yet even Crewe could not overcome the fundamental blur from spherical aberration. For decades, no one could. The limit seemed final. Then three researchers, who many considered troublemakers, decided to attempt the impossible. The insane idea that broke the limit. Knut Urban, Harold Rose, and Max Heider believed the only way to beat spherical aberration was to break the symmetry of the lens. This sounded crazy to most experts. Symmetry is the foundation of clear imaging. Remove it, and the image usually collapses into chaos. But the trio thought otherwise. They wanted to use exotic magnets, hexapoles, octopoles, and decay poles that produced uneven, twisting magnetic fields. These fields would distort the electron beam in complex patterns. In their design, the first magnet stretched and twisted the round beam into a triangular saddle shape. This odd deformation created a tiny patch of the beam that acted like a diverging lens. A second magnet reversed the distortion, restoring the circular beam but keeping the tiny diverging correction in the center. This subtle effect could cancel the spherical aberration of the main lens if tuned with extreme precision. Building such a system was incredibly hard. The magnets drifted, shook, and misaligned. Field strengths had to be perfect. Funding nearly vanished many times. Still, they refused to quit. In July 1997, they installed their final design. The first test failed. The image was unstable. They shut the machine down for a day to let the magnets settle. At two in the morning, they powered it on again. This time, the blur vanished. Atoms appeared as sharp dots. The impossible had finally happened. Their success spread quickly. At a later conference, Urban presented the images in a small room but crowds soon packed the hallway, eager to see the corrected atomic images with their own eyes. A new window into the atomic world. With aberration correction in place, electron microscopy transformed overnight. Resolution dropped below one angstrom, letting scientists see atoms clearly and consistently. Scanning TEMs also gained correction, giving researchers the ability to map atoms one by one. Suddenly, fields like materials, science, chemistry, and physics could observe structures they had only theorized before. Scientists could watch how atoms shift during stress, how defects move, how tiny cracks begin, and how new materials grow layer by layer. This clarity changed battery research, semiconductor design, quantum materials, catalysts, metals, ceramics, and countless other areas. Without atomic level images, researchers would be working in the dark. Today, corrected microscopes are essential tools in advanced labs around the world. Students who once only saw atomic diagrams in books can now observe real atoms in minutes. Every crisp image reminds us of the long struggle behind this achievement. It is a story of persistence, creativity, and the refusal to accept limits that seemed absolute. Why atomic imaging matters today. Seeing atoms is not just a scientific milestone, it is a necessity for modern technology. Every advanced material, from strong alloys to high-performance batteries, depends on atomic structure. Engineers need to know how atoms arrange themselves, how they bond, and how they move under heat or stress. Without this insight, designing new materials becomes guesswork. 
Electron microscopes help researchers understand why a battery wears out, why a metal cracks, or why a semiconductor behaves in a certain way. These insights guide the creation of faster electronics, cleaner energy systems, safer vehicles, and stronger buildings. Atomic imaging also helps scientists study quantum materials, where slight changes in atomic spacing can transform how electrons behave. It reveals how catalysts speed up reactions, how thin films form, and how new nanodevices operate. What was once a rare glimpse into the invisible world has become a central tool that shapes the future. And the ability to see atoms with such clarity continues to push technology forward in ways we could never have predicted decades ago. The journey to seeing atoms was long and uncertain. It began with the limits of light, moved through the first magnetic lenses, and nearly stalled at a barrier no one knew how to cross. Yet, through bold ideas and steady work, scientists finally broke that barrier. Today, atomic imaging guides research in every field that depends on materials. It shows us how structure shapes behavior at the smallest scales, this achievement reminds us that progress comes from refusing to accept limits, even when they seem absolute. The next discovery may already be forming, waiting for someone brave enough to look closer.